everyone. This is Hayama no Kantan Katakana Ekaiwa. This time I'd like to、uh, show you about a cyber truck by Tesla.、Uh, あ先日、イーロン・マスク氏がこのサイバートラックのプレゼンテーションをしていましたね。納車開始ということです。で、まあ、アメリカの車両関係に詳しい YouTuber たちがどんどん動画を上げているんですが、こういろいろ見たんですけれども、賛否両論ありますね。好きでも嫌い。好きでも嫌いっていう感じで満点は与えていませんでした。どうもイーロン・マスク氏はセンセーショナルつまりあの皆さんの気に留めてくれるというか目に留まるようなものを作りたかったっていうのが根底にあるようですあんまり儲ける儲けないは関係ないようですがこれが未来の乗り物になるこのピックアップトラップトラックってアメリカではあの人気があるんですけど日本ではあんまり人気がないんですね。4人乗りで後ろがトラック、まあだから半分乗用車半分トラックっていうのをピックアップトラックというらしいんですけど私あの車に詳しくないのでそこまで分かりませんけれどもパッと見た時に三角形に見えますよねなんか長方形みたいな感じででもこれは4人前に乗れて後ろがトラックっていう感じなんですね。で動画を見ましたけれどもほとんどもう。あのコンピューターで制御されていて、まあ、あのハンドルだけこうちょっと握ってるっていう感じの乗り物でとても不思議でしたこれから動画でご覧いただきたいと思いますいろんな特徴がありますありすぎて乗せられるかなって今心配しています。で2つ、まああのーアメリカ人に受け入れられないのが日本人でも相当だと思うんですけどバックミラーがない後ろがだから見えないんですねなんかあの後ろが覆われていて後ろのウィンドウがもう全然見えないということでそれを、まああのまあ、タブレットみたいなものでは見れるんですけど直に後ろが見えないというのと前ですねものすごいあの大きいフロントガラスで、まあ、のあの車のノーズの先を感じることができない全然前がこうあの感知できないっていうなんか不思議な感覚で乗りにくいあもう一つありましたあのハンドルですねステアリングホイールがあの角度がちょっと回すだけでうーっとこういっちゃうっていうのでこ,のこれに慣れるのに時間がかかる。この3つはやはやり多くの方が使いにくい、まあ、慣れるのに時間がかかるとは言っていらっしゃいましたそんな感じでこのサイバートラックどこが良くてどこが悪いのか検証した方の感想を踏まえて見ていきたいと思いますでもいいところもたくさんあるんですけどこれから例えばトヨタとかホンダとか日産が車を作る上でとても参考になる機能が満載だと思いました参考にして日本の車がもっといいものをテスラを超えるものを作ってくれたらなというふうに思いますそれではまた後で Please watch and enjoy Has a little bit of like wavering It's not quite a perfect flat line so I'm not an expert on it, but I'm just saying this is a truck you're probably not going to care too much about looking exactly perfect panel gap wise. All right, the next thing we got to talk about is the, the Cybertruck's trunk, aka the truck bed.、Uh, there's a lot going on here, actually. Look at this gigantic slope. It kind of it looks like a dump truck to me, but one thing you should know is first of all, a dampened opening for the tailgate. But it's not a power opening tailgate, so you will have to manually close the thing. But it is a nice soft damp. And then the other side is the powered tonneau cover. Oh, wait. I should do the thing. They told me it could support up to 300 pounds. So. They told me I could do it, so here we are. I'm not going to jump, but I'm told 300 pounds of force from somebody standing on one foot. So, I think if I jumped, I could probably break the thing. But the fact that I'm standing on it and it's not breaking, that's pretty good. And it's a motorized tonneau cover, which means.
Pretty smooth, I gotta say. Now, once you're here, there's a bunch of stuff I gotta talk about with this trunk. First things first, you probably noticed it slid down and revealed a rear window, uh, which means number one, yes, there's a rear window. It doesn't go up and down, but at least you have that glass there. And two, yes, that means that when you close the tonneau cover, you are completely blocking your rear visibility. We'll get to that later. <laughs> so, the other thing, you can buy one separately and tie it up in the trunk, but you don't get one by default. And then the other thing is, there's power in the trunk. So 220 volts here and one 240 volt. If you wanna charge a vehicle with a nine kilowatts out, you can use literally the thing you'd plug into a dryer outlet. You can plug that in here, plug it into a vehicle and give battery to another EV. So just in general, I'm glad that more EVs are doing this, having the ability to power other things and actually charge. You could actually theoretically power your house with this if you had the right inverter. Uh, but 11 kilowatts out of the charge port, 9.6 kilowatts are, or, or a prototype you'll see there's no door handles and you're like, oh, that's cute. But when you ship the thing, you're gonna have door handles eventually. No door handles on the Cybertruck and they're sticking to it. I have my concerns about this. So basically how this works is there's a little button right here that's indented. You press that button and when it's unlocked, it sort of pushes it out maybe two inches. Then you grab in here and open the whole door. And then you close it. The auto presented windows, they all close themselves up here. They're frameless windows. That's cool. It works. Same thing actually back here. Smaller button, you press it, it opens it, and it works. And this is actually a full 90 degree door. I love that there's like stainless steel in here. It's very clearly all metal. It's got a nice thunk to it too. But what I've noticed and this is something you'd already be thinking of if you live in the Northeast or something, is if it's cold, or if it's raining, or if it's frozen, if there's like an inch of ice over here, is this gonna work? Tesla's telling me, and this is, a, this is a California company that tells me these things, but they're telling me up to an inch of ice, if you can break through that ice and press this button, it'll push with enough force to open it and break the ice off. I hope that's true. That's debatable, we'll see. But the other thing about that is, I think a lot of people are going to open ここでこの車サイバードラックをデザインしたフランツ・フォン・ホルツハウゼン。ドイツ系の方なんですけども、この方のことをちょっとお話ししたいと思います。車を購入して使う側とデザインする側っていうのはちょっと違いますよね。え
あの先ほどの方あのそのレビューをした方はこんな5センチあの、まあ、ちっちゃいボタンを押すと5センチ開くこれがあの寒い時やあのそういう北の,国の方の地方の方が雪や氷がそのまあ開けるボタンのところに固まっちゃったりしたらあのこれは困るんじゃないかって。デザイン的に良くても使う側としてはこれが果たして使うことができるのかまた5センチしか開かないって言ったら氷でこう阻まれたら5センチこれは微妙な数字だというふうにおっしゃってました本当作り手側と使う側っていうのは違うんですよね。Oh my God. Well, try that on, really? okay. sure. I mean, I think you could, we could probably have a pro pitcher. Percent or two. Yeah. yeah. We can. However, our you know, US regulations require mirrors ah. at this point in time. So. Ah. so there's something that we can have that you can't. That That's you right. Can, which yeah. is cameras for wing mirrors effect. That's right. true. Yeah. Right. But we did put the camera screens in for the B pillars. Yeah. And if you want to put a Little curve yeah. left to right on that. Into a curve for manufacturing yeah. so the, the glass doesn't collapse on yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And for sound, so like if you get a flat piece of glass and you're driving and there's wind on it, it'll go boom, 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 like a drum.、Mm -hmm. But when you get that little curve, you kind of put the tension to the outside. Yeah. You get rid of that noise.、And、this has to be the biggest windscreen wiper.、Ever. It's definitely the biggest truck wiper, the biggest automotive wiper、yeah. uh, out there. So just under four feet long.、Um, But you know, we went with the single wiper because we wanted to keep it clean.、Mm -hmm. We did talk about deployable wipers and a、yeah. whole bunch of things, but、yeah. turned out we actually were able to like, make that even more aerodynamic. Even front trunk, you know, front, front trunk space, which is actually pretty impressive because if you look, look at the front overhang, it's absolutely tiny compared、yeah. to the more traditional trucks. It's very small. F 150s,、yeah. which have just, you know, they're out here. They're out here somewhere, yeah.、Um, that's still. Still a useful space. Yeah, you can, you can fit a, a you know, carry on in there or your、cool. grocery bags.、Yeah. You know. yeah. It's got some room、um, and you can open it from inside. Tailgate. And you can sit in it. Yeah, you can you tailgate.、Fit? Yeah, yeah, we both fit. And fit? Actually, the height of this、yeah. was like, designed so we could fit、yeah. and sit and then you get shade at the, the wheels. And I thought, oh yeah, classic design concept style. They're never going to. But th these are the production wheels, right? These are production wheels. And you know, the, the first thing we. Looked at was the moment you put something round on this vehicle, it just took it out of its futuristic state.、Yep. So we knew right away that the, the caps had to have this angular faceted feel. And if you, you, know, you stand back and you look at the caps, the, the, they're not round. It's kind of a square thing. And we designed <laughs> the, the cap to over、um, ride the, the tire. And so the, 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 the spokes stretch right out to the tread.、Yep. It just makes the whole thing feel bigger. bigger and it just Feels incredibly to the, to the menu and play with all the modes. Classic, you know, had to make sure that the angular kind of character of the exterior of the truck made its way into the interior, so it felt hol holistic. Although it's very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Like the seats look incredibly angular. You got really comfortable to conform to your body. Yeah, cool. Let's、yeah. look in the back because I think the, the rear seats do something cool as well. Oh, they're halfway up. Oh, I get it. All the way up. There we go. So you can chuck a load more stuff. Yeah, yeah like. The, a, a truck is all about, it's like a Swiss Army knife. It's all、yeah. about you know, how are you going to use it for what you need.、Mm -hmm. um, and As you said, it's super efficient on aero. And、yes. so, like, you know, if we need it to, to get to the price point that makes sense, we'll, we'll do it. But like, it's a super useful part of the truck. So, it's、yeah. something we want to keep. Let's hit some buttons. Yeah. So, the button, the tailgate comes down. You know, it's got a torsion spring, so you can push on it. We've got what we like to call our smuggler's bay. It's under, <laughs> under bed storage. Oh,、uh, oh there we go. That's where you put the contraband. Yeah, exactly. That's、right. yeah. But extra space that we had,、yeah. so we give it back. It's a six foot bed,、mm -hmm. so it's slightly longer than your five and a half foot bed. Yeah. Yeah. So I can you know, do my welding,、yes. you know, yeah. do my barbecuing. You can, you can barbecue, you can weld. There's a 220 and two 110s.、Yeah. So、um, we've got 20 amps and 30 amps. So you can actually weld with this, there's enough power.、Yeah. 
Um, the power conversion system is our first bi-directional system. Yep. So you can get power out, you can put power in, and eventually with our new chargers, at home chargers, you'll yep. be able to go via the home. Power your house. This is a very functional bed. We put in yeah. an l track sure. camping and sleeping in here and making a bed. I think I know the answer to this one, but would this have been possible with any other boss other than Elon? No, oh, hell no. 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 Give, us a, give us a flavor of what it's like to have Elon Musk as a boss. How does he, how does he operate? How often is he in here demanding sub-10 microns and demanding perfection? I mean, I, I, for me, it's you know, wonderful to have, to have a boss, especially at the CEO level, that understands physics and engineering. Because I don't have to like dumb it down or water it down. We just talk like engineers about this is why I can't do this. These are the limitations, and I've said it before, but like we go to the limits of physics and chemistry, and that's it. Anything above that is not allowed. <laughs> Anything below that is not what Tesla does. I, I realize you didn't mention cost there. Like you know, it seems Teslas should be affordable and, and, mm -hmm. and for everyone, right? But you're not really take, taking into account cost at the expense of the, the overall dream. Yeah, I mean, cost is in every element of what we do, and I think it comes here a lot of times in integration and deletion. So some of the stuff we're talking about up front on the arrow bits where you're not adding bits on, every bit you add on, that's a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. And so I really, on my team, and especially with you guys, we try to break Conway's law all the time, because you can't tell who designed what and where one part ends. And, you, and when you get that integration, you delete those parts, you just end up with less costly. Yeah, Elon always board says board. the best part is no part. Yeah. Yeah. So we really adhere to that yeah. philosophy and we try to just take out the parts. Or, you know, you, you mentioned that's a giant windscreen. We, we, we could have made multiple parts, but then it's got some parts. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we need to go and find some guns, some axes, <laughs> some arrows, do it. some just general weapons, and then start smacking this thing. Go for it. デザイナーとエンジニアから貴重な話が聞けましたよね。作り手側の、えー、苦労とかどういうコンセプトで作ったっていうのが分かりますね。えー、この辺で前の動画の、えー、レビューに戻りたいと思います。Not the best legroom ever, but still a totally great back seat. Got another screen back here that I'll show you in a second. There's a little bit of seat back storage. But check this out. There's a little trick to the back seat. Just for storage. So, although you already have a front trunk and a rear trunk, if you want even more covered storage with this latch right here, the right seat actually comes completely up and you can just keep stuff down here if there's no person here. Matter of fact, the left two seats come over here. Also, do the same thing. I'm gonna get out and pull that latch as well. And then that's just that's a ton of room for activities. Look at this. Not that that's better than having a seat, but you can put a bunch of boxes back here. You can put, I don't know, you can just put stuff back here. Also, there's the nine and a half inch screen for the passengers, which is where I discovered you can move the passenger seat, not the driver's seat, on the screen. And these are also heated left and right, not middle, but heated left and right rear seats. They look ventilated, they look cold, but they don't do that. I have made some key changes that I think、uh, I actually like a lot. There's still no stocks. There's still no blinker stocks, still no drive reverse, all that stuff. But the buttons on the steering wheel are at least now haptic, like actual buttons. They're not haptic touch controls where you touch it and it vibrates to simulate a button. No, it actually clicks and moves this time. So that's awesome. So at least that's better. So that's the, that's the blinkers on the steering wheel. That's your headlights. That's your giant windshield wiper, which I'll talk about, and your voice controls. You still got your wheels up and down for volume of media and your autopilot controls. And then this sort of a flat squircle, I guess is what you'd call it, like a squared off circle type thing for the steering wheel. Oh, and then、uh, it's a real horn this time. There's no like button on the steering wheel horn like in my car. So I really appreciate that. Also, again, no Tesla logo on the steering wheel. But there's some new little things that they've done. It's, it's really well thought out, and I still honestly, after using it, I really feel like Tesla has the best software in the car industry that's not CarPlay and Android Auto. So, first of all, you, you start with just this huge Cybertruck in the middle for all your vehicle controls. There's little hovering dots, so if you want to open the tailgate or open the tonneau cover, you can do that with any of these little hovering buttons. Open the charge port flap, charge. Charge port flap, cool.、Um, but then all of the rest of the looks about this car,、uh, you can adjust in real time. So, first of all, ride height. You tap the wheel there, 
We are at the sort of uh, entry ride height where it squats to be as easy as possible to get into. You can also go low, medium, or high, and it adjusts super fast. There's a pretty awesome 12 inches of suspension travel between the lowest mode and the highest mode. You can go all the way up to 17 inches of clearance in off-road mode. Extract mode is the absolute highest. It'll add another 80 millimeters of clearance, but it'll go a foot down from that. So that's pretty sick. And there are aluminum skid plates slash aero shields at the bottom of the truck. I continue to move around. Uh, if I lower the window, for example, look at the window on the car. Halfway down, halfway down. I go all the way down on this window, all the way down on that window. So that's real time. I get my lights in real time. I have uh, the headlights down here. If I even turn the steering wheel, all of that moves in real time. And it's kind of on this like Mars terrain, cyber terrain, wherever you want to call it. I think that's sweet. So you just get a full overview of the car there. You've got your media, your navigation. It's telling me if I need to close my door or fasten my seatbelt. And this is my range indicator up here. 223 miles right now, which if I tap it is 76% battery. Pretty close to what I'm expecting. And then you see your navigation, which basically if you just swipe over, you can fill that right two thirds of the screen with navigation and keep your vehicle controls on the left. And when you're in drive, that looks just like it normally does in a Tesla with other stuff on the road. But now you have all your navigation stuff. You, you always have all your stuff in the dock down at the bottom. Heated steering wheel with two levels, which is nice now. And your heated and cooled front seats, which is great. So if you just get into controls and dynamics, these are sort of the two spaces you'll spend the most time. Controls is all of the things with just opening and closing, unlocking, screen brightness, headlights. Your glove box is a drawer, which I think is a little bit unique. The button on the screen, I kind of wish you still had a button to open the glove box, but all of that is here. And then dynamics is where you have all of your typical like steering and acceleration profiles for Tesla. So in the triple motor version, that would be comfort mode, standard mode, and beast mode. A little cringy, I guess, but that is your maximum acceleration. And then your ride and handling and your preferred ride height. If you go custom, you can actually individually adjust these things. So acceleration, I'm going to go beast mode. But ride and handling, maybe you want it to be a little more relaxed or a little more focused. That just basically means your damping and your suspension is either a little firmer or a little softer. I got to say, though, the steering is, in my opinion, the craziest thing about the Tesla Cybertruck crazier than the design, crazier than the dimensions, crazier than everything else about it, is the steering. So it's a steer-by-wire system. This is the first time Tesla's done this. Um, you can't actually change the steering weight or steering feel. It's always the same ratio all the time, but it's crazy for two reasons. One, there is rear axle steering, and it is very, very active and really helpful. And two, is the total turn is less than 180 degrees for your maximum tightest turn. Usually you're used to doing a whole bunch of movement on the wheel. You don't have to do that anymore. So that kind of makes the muscle memory of grabbing the top of the squircle useless. So first of all, the rear wheel steer, it's awesome. It's up to 10 degrees in the opposite direction of the front wheels at low speeds under 40 miles an hour. And what that does, if you've heard of this before, it effectively shortens the wheelbase and allows you to turn way, way tighter. I think we'll do a sort of a comparison with the F-150 Lightning, which is a normal truck that doesn't have 10 degrees of rear wheel steer. And this one, it just means you can turn way sharper. It feels way more nimble in parking lots. It, it feels like it shrinks the wheelbase, the whole dimensions of the truck. It's a lot. It's gonna take some getting used to, but I think we should just get to driving this thing. So let's do it. Let's, let's drive the Cybertruck. All right, driving the Tesla Cybertruck. Feels like a Doug Miro way to start the video, but man, okay. It still doesn't really feel like a real vehicle, but it definitely is. And first impression really is, well, okay. It feels like a Tesla, that's not gonna be a shocker. Really instant throttle response. This is the triple motor version, it's the beast. Um, but also like spacing wise, I'm just looking around, just trying to feel how big this vehicle is. This is a small road, school bus. Uh, I'm able to maneuver around though. I have pretty good visibility everywhere. I'm just thinking a lot about where the nose of the truck is because it is such a short nose. It's a really different, different ratio. I'm not used to showed you. And a full six foot bed. 
but it's got the smallest frunk, even smaller than the smaller Rivian R1T. So they've kind of pushed around the dimensions a little bit, but second thing is just the vast distance between me and the front of the windshield during wheel. That's a remap people have to adjust to. They're pretty stubborn about this stuff. With this one, it's gonna be that there is no rear visibility with the mirror when the tonneau cover is closed. So my tonneau cover is closed right now. Can't see anything behind me, but I've sort of started to remap my glance behind me to the preview of the rear facing camera, which is on the screen all the time. And so I just keep glancing there to see what's behind me. You can actually move it to the left or right hand side so you get a bigger preview when it's on the right or you can just move it on the left. So yeah, that's, that's the Cybertruck muscle memory remap is your rear view mirror doesn't have a camera mode. World's largest windshield wiper is hilarious. Uh, it looks ridiculous. It, it might be logistically ridiculous too. I don't know if in the ice or the snow, if it's gonna be able to like break apart enough ice to move that huge windshield wiper. Thank you for watching. ご視聴ありがとうございます。で、サイバートラック、日本ではどうなのかって言ったら、ちょっと注意事項というか気になる点があるようです。これ日本では普通貨物自動車扱いで、1ナンバーになる可能性があるってことは本当トラック並みなんですね。で毎年車検があり中型免許が必要であり右ハンドル車が設定されない可能性があるそうです。ちょっと厳しいですよね。で下にちょっと書いたんですけど都内でチャージできるのは2箇所しかないそうです。さてこのようにサイバートラック見ていてこういうふうにもう全部がコンピューター制御になってあのハンドルを握るだけでもちゃんとパネルで操作しなきゃいけないっていうのもあってかえってなんか面倒くさいかななんて私は感じました。それではまた I see you later. Bye.